Welcome back. This is part two of the GC2 slash GC2E firmware update process. Before we go any further, I do want to remind people if you've not watched the first part on how to set up the software, please make sure that you do so to make sure that you've set up your software correctly on your Windows computer. As you can see here, we've got a GC2E. It's already wired up for power. I have not plugged in the transformer though right now. And the backup battery is disconnected as well. We also have our update cable that we set up the software for on our desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and show that. If you guys remember in the last video, we set up our software. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my downloads folder here. And you'll see here I've got the extracted folder. And I'm going to go ahead and launch the shortcut recreated. So in the last video, I created this shortcut. I had to attach a COM port number to it so that the computer knew where to send the firmware through. And we've already set that all up. So all you should have to do at this point is simply double click the software and launch it. And you should see something like this where it says pinging, not connected, no panel. Okay. I'm going to just downsize that window to get that out of the way. What we want to do next is go ahead and plug in our update cable. And it only goes in one way, so if you're feeling like you're having to force it, make sure that there's no obstructions or that you're not line, misaligning the pins. There should only be one way that that cable goes in. Um, now, if you're doing an older GC2, you may have to remove the back plate to actually do this update. On the newer GC2Es, there is a hole in the back there for it. At that point, what all I have to do is just simply power up the panel. Upon powering up the panel, what should happen is the system will start to recognize that there is a firmware update. So you'll see that it said reading resource info, that the system is idle, and it'll ask if you want to update. It'll show your current panel's firmware, and then the option to go ahead and hit yes to update this panel. So I'm going to go ahead and click yes and start the process. Now be aware that the process of de updating the panel will not erase any of the previous programming or information. And this process can take sometimes a couple of minutes, so it's important to make sure that just like we have here in this video, that your panel is sitting in a stationary area, that the computer is sat down somewhere that's got power connected so you don't have to worry about maybe your laptop dying. Um, and make sure that you have consistent power so it doesn't stop in the middle of the far firmware update. And like I said, I usually recommend taking these off the wall, setting it on a desktop, and then going through with the process. So right now we're just going to let this go. I'm going to go ahead and pause for just a minute to give the video time or give time for the software update to take place. And then we'll resume once it's finished. So now that the flashing is about complete, you'll see something like this where it'll say performing delay after flashing. Okay. At this point, the panel may power up. I still strongly recommend leaving the panel face down. Do not try and unplug anything yet. Wait till the delay has completed. So we'll give it just a second. And the flashing took a couple minutes there. Depending on your computer, depending on how far the firmware is coming from, it may take a few minutes. But as long as you're seeing the progress bar move along, nothing to worry about. So we'll let this just wrap up here. Give it just a second here. Perfect. It'll show a quick flash of the word pass. And it should go back to a normal screen of no panel, pinging, not connected. At this point, what I always recommend doing is making sure that you power down your panel first. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect my power. And then I'm going to unplug my update cable. And at that point, I like to always verify my firmware so I can plug in the panel again and verify that it updated to the correct firmware. And at this point, I'll go ahead and select security menu, toolbox, and turn the default master code for right now, which is 1111, unless you've changed it to something else, and scroll over to where it shows version, and verify that my version firmware has updated. At this point, that concludes our firmware update process. If you have further questions, concerns, or run into any problems during your update, don't be afraid to contact our 2Gig tech support or reach out to your local sales rep if you need additional help. Thank you for choosing 2Gig and thank you for your time today.